Are aliens using Antarctica as a home base? Or is Antarctica their real home? Strange, inexplicable sightings of incredibly advanced aircraft have been noted for hundreds of years all across the planet, leading many researchers to believe we may never have been alone on this planet. There is speculation about the likelihood of a strange variety of beings that may have been native to Antarctica before it froze over during the Middle Ages. Some even suggest that Egyptian pharaohs and world rulers may have regularly conducted trade with a far-off yet unknown mysterious culture. This culture is now forced to abandon the surface, living reclusive lives deep beneath the frozen ice sheet that now makes the surface of their once fertile homeworld a desolate wasteland. Helping support further research into Antarctica is critical for the future of humanity and requires support from viewers at either Patreon or any of the links in the description box below. What might be found at the South Pole could change life as we know it on Earth forever. In today's video, I would like to show you something in Antarctica that looks very much like this. Giant buildings, skyscrapers, and this is of course the two footprints of the Twin Towers, leave these massive indentations in the rock where they stood, even if you could scoop up entire cities off the planet and get rid of them, you would still see the evidence of the city having been there simply from the weight and the depressions in the underlying surface. And that's the focus of today's video. We've actually found this, very strangely, recently, October, in St. Augustine, Florida, over at the old Catholic mission called Mission Nombre de Dios. There was records that were uncovered of a priest that had found these walls from a 17th century stone church, and they've uncovered them and begun to excavate them, but once again... Even structures this old in a place like Florida, where everything grows over so quick, they will leave evidence almost indefinitely of having been there. Now, if you haven't been to St. Augustine, Florida, I would highly, highly recommend, if you have it in your ability to do, to take a trip to understand history, to understand the history of our country. This city predates the pilgrims by nearly a hundred years. 1565, St. Augustine was a city. The pilgrims didn't even arrive until 16, until 1620. So 55 years, I guess. It was Spanish territory all the way up till right before the Civil War. And currently, the light show is rated top 10 in the world. Over a million lights decorate the city, and you can drive around at 2 o'clock in the morning, and it's bright as day. This is a picture of the Leitner Museum, another fantastic thing to visit in St. Augustine. It's a collection of one man's travels, three stories of some of the most interesting things from everywhere. And St. Augustine is just um, replete with places to visit like this. You can walk around in the old town and the streets would remind you of being in 13th century Europe. The churches, the buildings, the um, armories, everything is just like walking back in time. But without any further delay, um, let's go down to Antarctica. Now where we're going to be today, um, just for reference, I always use this topographical map so we can look at the underlying ground first. We're actually going to be down here in the five o'clock region. We haven't been here before. There is this large mountain structure and then just inland right here. There looks like what was the bay and offshore there's some very shallow water and I'm not sure what that is. I'm still looking into it but let's go ahead and pull up Google Earth Pro and we'll max out the screen here real quick. Give me one second. So down here, now I haven't, and you can see by the lack of the, uh, um, the push pins, I haven't seen much. 
but what I found today is clearly footprints of what looks like a lost city. Now, I am in the 2012 historical layer. I've always recommended that people do this. Now, when you look at it from above, you see a lot of striations, and you think, okay, that's just evidence of the retreat of glaciers. But when you look closer, and you really look at the shapes, it looks like buildings and roads. Here it's very, very um, light to see right here, but you see what looks like what would have been perhaps a road, which would have been, in this case, elevated because of the depressions of the buildings. And then you see square structures and then perhaps an alleyway behind. And when you look at this, and you can look through the uh, destruction caused by the glaciers, you can start to see where buildings might have stood. And as we move out closer to the coast here, it becomes a lot more apparent. Now I've labeled this section Ancient Manhattan because Manhattan, of course, is this tiny little peninsula spit of land that has all of these enormous, enormous buildings on it. And of course, if you were able to somehow get rid of all the buildings, what you would see would be something like this. And you can clearly start to see, especially down here at the end, what look like roads and places where buildings would have been. You see some that are, you know, not perfectly 90 degrees, but down here, this very much looks like a port, especially over here. When you look at this, does this look like an artificial bay, like a natural bay? This looks like something you would see in any port city on the East Coast. It's deep water. It has a specific shape to it. It has a nice outlet to the sea. There's a couple of smaller ones over here that you can see that are a little less pronounced, but still very much there. Let's see if I can get rid of the screen moyer a little bit. And like I said, I know it looks like just rock. It looks like just rocks, but the striations seem too neat. They seem too much in line to be random, especially as they change. Because you can see very clearly here a line. There's something very different here than is going on here. You know, the, the Chinese have mastered the art of pulling sand up off of the seafloor out in the Spratly Islands and creating, taking things that are existing, atolls, and improving upon them and making them into entire islands with runways and military. It's not out of the realm of possibility that these ancient peoples had this same ability to do this and maybe take something that wasn't useful and modify it to make it useful. And given this could have been thousands of years ago, this could be the remnants of it. Over here we see another one. It's kind of, this one's a little bit harder to make out, but once again, when you look at the shape, and I'm sure it's changed a great deal. And do pardon if you hear some noise in the background, I do have some maintenance work going on at the home today. But when you go to this region and you look at it with critical eye, you can start to see that there are clearly shapes that indicate there was a civilization here at one time. Some of it looks a lot like just ponds and lakes and you know, this could be just evidence of that. But there's still something very organized about it that it's hard to put your finger on. But, and it does, a, a lot of it look like nature. It looks like things you would expect. But 
especially in this region, the footprints are pretty clear. You can see where, like especially like right here, this looks like a perfectly square building, probably very large, very heavy. Sat here at one time. And here, you can look even closer and see smaller ones. Evidence of where their roads would have been. There is clearly a building here. Some larger structure here. But we will leave it there. I didn't want to waste a whole lot of your time today with this. But it's uh, just another piece of the puzzle. Five o'clock um, on the clock, of course, as we use it for reference, 12 o'clock being up here by Argentina, 5 o'clock down here, and we see evidence of it in the real world in places like St. Augustine, Florida, and in Manhattan. So we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for your support. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time. I'm sure you've heard the news. Ancient Antarctica is like a time capsule waiting to be unlocked. And you can be a part of this journey. Beneath the ice lies a world of untold mysteries, prehistoric landscapes, ancient ecosystems, even potential signs of early human life. But here's the catch. Uncovering these secrets requires cutting-edge technology and relentless research. That's where you come in. By pledging just one dollar on Patreon or subscribing to our channel, you can support our mission to uncover the hidden past of this frozen continent Every dollar helps us get closer to groundbreaking discoveries that could rewrite history. So, are you ready to be part of something epic? Click the link, join our community, and let's unravel the mysteries of ancient Antarctica together. Because every mystery solved brings us one step closer to understanding our own story. Subscribe now, and let's make history.